Welcome to chapter 5. In this chapter we're going to be talking about deductions for and from AGI which is adjusted gross income. We're going to start out with health savings accounts and uh, health savings accounts are a way for people to pay for um, out-of-pocket health costs uh, and to do that with pre-tax dollars. So health uh, savings accounts are set up as flexible spending accounts. There are also health reimbursement accounts that employers will set up and employers will, will fund themselves. So uh, you could have an FSA where the employee is sticking money in it or a health reimbursement account where the employer is managing that. There's some old things called uh, medical savings accounts that you're not really going to see anymore. So as I said, the health savings account will pay for unreimbursed qualifying medical expenses. Again, no tummy tucks or things like that uh, can be paid for from that. The contributions that an employee makes to an HSA are deductions for AGI. And what does that mean? That means that it will be deducted from gross income before reaching the adjusted gross income figure. And why is that important? It's important because there are lots of credits, deductions, uh, things like that that are based on AGI. So when a deduction is taken for AGI, it will reduce the AGI number and allow somebody the opportunity to potentially fall under the threshold for certain deductions. Um, so it is a use it or lose it situation with a health savings account. There are some rollover provisions where you can carry it from a, a portion of your unused contributions from one year to the next, but if you exceed that or the employer hasn't provided for that, then you lose any unused contributions. If you take the money out and the money was not for a an appropriate qualified medical expense, um, you will be receive a penalty as well as the tax on that money. But as long as you use it for its appropriate purpose, it can come out of those accounts tax-free, penalty-free. Here are the limits for the health savings accounts for 2021. And so we've got the contribution limit um, and you need to make the contributions by April 15th of the following year. So let's say you decide that you're going to contribute, I don't know, $2,000 for 2021, um, but maybe you didn't start your job until late in the year and you didn't want to have that much taken out. You can still contribute until April 15th of 2022 toward the 2021. Similarly, you can also submit receipts uh, until April 15th for those um, uh, 2021 expenses. Uh, so as I said, as long as you take the money out for its appropriate purpose, there is no tax, no penalty. Um, and the penalty is substantial, I, I should add. Uh, it is a 20% penalty. Although once the taxpayer reaches the age of 65, they can take the money out penalty free. Uh, any distributions from the HSA come reported on a Form 1099 SA. And that's what you, uh, as a tax person, will be looking for uh, when somebody has taken a distribution. If all, all that happened was they just put some money in and never actually used it, then it's not something that um, you need to, uh, you will expect to see a 1099 SA for. Um, if somebody is self-employed, uh, you know, many people who work for employers, the employer covers the cost of the health care and those premiums are taken out pre-tax. Well, a number of years ago, Congress realized that self-employed people should have that opportunity as well. So if someone is self-employed, they can 
take the cost of their insurance that they pay for themselves and their family, um, they can deduct that uh, for AGI. It can cover medical, dental, long-term care insurance for you as well as your dependents under the age of 27. And uh, the ability to cover an adult child up until the age of 27 is a, a reasonably new um, uh, uh, turn of events, I, I should say. Uh, it was for many years that once a child reached the age of 18 and was no longer a full-time student, they were kicked off mom and dad's health insurance. And there are lots of young folks who are not yet employed in a job that would provide them with health insurance. And the cost of purchasing insurance for somebody of that age is can, can be uh, very challenging. So um, this was one of the first uh, phases of the Obamacare health plan and amusingly it was one in which many people in Congress were able to avail themselves of because they had adult children um, and it, again it isn't just the 18 or 19 year old who opted not to go to college it's the 24 year old who has now graduated and is no longer a full-time student and maybe can't find work in their field. So now those uh, adult children don't have to worry about an uninsured accident or something of that nature, some sort of catastrophic health condition uh, because they will be covered uh, potentially on, you know, as long as mom and dad have health insurance until they are 27 years old. And I can tell you that my children were uh, beneficiaries of that and have been. Um, um, this slide's pretty wordy so I only want to say a couple more things about the self-employed health insurance. If someone is self-employed but also has a job and they are eligible to be covered under an employer-sponsored health plan, they can't take the self-employed deduction during the months that they were also eligible to participate in the uh, employer-sponsored health plan. Um, and then you also cannot use the health insurance premiums, that deduction, to cause the business to generate a loss, essentially. So um, you can only take that deduction up into the point that uh, the self-employed person actually has earned income from that enterprise. We're going to move on to talk about IRAs and uh, retirement accounts in general. There are two basic types of IRAs, which stands for individual retirement account. There's a traditional and there's what's called a Roth. A traditional IRA is predominantly what you see somebody contribute to that isn't eligible to participate in an employer-sponsored health plan. The money that is contributed to the traditional IRA is a deduction for AGI, so they can make that contribution to their health insurance plan before AGI is determined. They can't draw that money out um, unless there are certain pretty significant exceptions in terms of events that have to occur um, before you can take that money out penalty free prior to your uh, age 59 and a half. Um, if you take it out and then you don't meet one of those exceptions prior to age 59 and a half, not only do you pay the tax, but you get hit with a penalty as well. Any um, distributions that are made once the person reaches retirement age and begins to take that money out, those are taxable, but not penalized as long as the person is of retirement age. Then we have Roth. And I, I should sort of step back and talk about the rationale behind the traditional IRA. So many people in their working years are generally earning more money than they would be earning during their retirement years. So the idea behind the traditional IRA is if somebody is currently in the 24% or let's, you know, maybe even higher tax bracket and uh, 
they can contribute to their Roth IRA, or excuse me, traditional IRA, and not pay money on that tax at their current rate of whatever it is, 24% uh, at, at the point that they're at. And instead, when they're 65 or 70 or in the, you know, uh, rocking chair and power just went out for a second. Anyway, that was weird. Um, so they uh, can draw that money out in their retirement years at a point that they're going to probably be at a much lower tax bracket. So it's not as, so there will be some tax savings in that. The Roth IRA is kind of the opposite of that. The person makes the contribution, but that money is taxed in the current year that it's earned and contributed, uh, with the idea being that in retirement years, somebody can draw that money out and it will then be tax-free. So while it isn't so great in terms of a tax savings vehicle, in terms of providing tax-free retirement income, um, that's really the benefit behind the Roth. There are contribution limits to the IRAs and uh, the, they are substantially lower than what you will see uh, that someone could contribute to an employer-sponsored health plan. Um, so the limit of, for the IRA is the lesser of 100% of the earned income, and it's got to probably be really low in that case, or $6,000. Now, uh, as you'll see, $6,000 is a drop in the bucket compared to what somebody can contribute if they're in an employer-sponsored retirement plan. Um, if you've got a spouse, even if the spouse doesn't have earned income, you can then double that, and that can become $12,000. If uh, the taxpayer and spouse are over age 50, they are entitled to do what are called catch-up contributions. So they can then contribute an additional $1,000 per spouse to the IRA and bringing that total up to $14,000 that they could then, uh, from a traditional IRA, deduct for AGI. If it's a Roth IRA, they can still put the money in, but they get no deduction currently. And be aware that there is no prohibition on participating in an employer-sponsored health plan, or health plan, I keep saying, retirement plan, a 401k, something of that nature, and contributing to an IRA, but uh, there are certain limitations that uh, attach to that, and I don't want to get that far into the weeds um, in this lecture, but your book talks more about those. Um, similarly, if you decide, maybe I want to split the difference. Maybe I want to have a little bit of tax savings benefit now, and also know I'm going to get a little bit of tax-free retirement income later. You can certainly split the difference between in terms of the, the Roth and the traditional IRA and contribute to both of them in a calendar year, but you still are confined to the same contribution limits, either 6000 or 7000 per spouse over age 50 um, if you contribute to both of them. Uh, but that can be kind of a happy medium for some people who want uh, a little bit of of both of those opportunities. We're moving now into, now what happens if you started out contributing to your uh, Roth, or excuse me, your traditional IRA, and then you thought about, or maybe you didn't know there was the difference, and you thought, you know, maybe uh, what I really wanted instead was a Roth IRA. And you decide, well, I want to convert my traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. You can certainly do that, um, but there are, um, these are not requirements that are listed here, bulleted on your slide, but this is where if you don't meet these criteria, perhaps this is not the best move for you and maybe you just want to set up a Roth IRA and contribute to that going forward. So ideally, because you're going to pay the tax on when, when you make that conversion, you're going to have to then currently pay the tax on that that wasn't paid when you made that contribution. If you are in a low tax bracket, um, 
and you expect that you will be in a higher tax bracket somewhere down the road when you retire, that may be a good thing to do now. Now, I've talked a little bit before about the requirements of taking money out of the traditional IRA. Once you hit 59 and a half, the floodgates open, you can take whatever it is that you need, you'll pay the tax on it, but there'll be no penalty. If, however, you meet certain criteria, you can take it out prior to 59 and a half without the penalty, you will still pay the tax. These bulleted items uh, represent uh, the list of things that will enable you to do that, uh, particularly, you know, first time home buyer, uh, educational costs. So uh, things like that are certainly um, things that, that the money can uh, potentially be better spent for currently than waiting for it down the road. The CARES Act provision, which was part of the whole pandemic legislation, suspended the 10% penalty for people who had to dip into the, their IRA uh, in order to basically get through the pandemic. And uh, I, this was something that I encountered with quite a number of people. They were laid off or they had uh, their business couldn't operate. They weren't considered essential. And the retirement funds may have been the only liquid resource that they could access to meet their immediate needs. Um, and so the they suspended the penalty on those. There, that has now sunsetted. You can't do it. But if you run into somebody who has uh, was in that situation and hadn't filed a return, this is something that you should be aware of. They were also permitted to, if it was a big chunk, um, uh, they could take up to 100000 And so now you're really talking about increasing your income by 100000 but people were taking out large chunks because this was kind of a one-time uh, opportunity to take it out penalty-free. So people were taking out chunks that... Um, because nobody really knew how long all of this would last and how much they would actually need. But all of a sudden now their income potentially was going to go up by as much as $100,000 in that year. And so there was a provision to spread that out over three years. So uh, this is something that you may still see for the coming years of people coming in with those. The other change that came about as a result of the CARES Act is that there um, used to be a required minimum distribution. Once you hit age 70 and a half, you had to start taking from your IRA. That was uh, increased until uh, to age 72. Uh, and so what we've talked about now are were traditional. We're going to now talk about distributions from Roth. So Roth distributions can come out tax-free as long as, uh, well, tax-free forever. So you're not going to, because you paid the tax on that already. The thing you didn't pay the tax on are any earnings that the money that you contributed to made once it went into the plan. So um, you can uh, take the contributions out tax-free as long as you had opened the IRA for five years and uh, if the distributions were made after somebody was 59 and a half or uh, if somebody dies then the money can come out penalty-free, participant becomes disabled or there are first-time home buyer expenses. Uh, there are also self-employed, uh, plans for self-employed uh, individuals that provide greater retirement savings options than just contributing to an IRA. Um, and I'm actually, this is probably a good place to stop this video and go on to the next one.